Hi and welcome to the Geek Legion of Doom. This is a TV review and I'll be have a look at Tour of Duty Season 3. So before I get into this review, uh, I just want to talk about the actual DVD itself because uh, people who are outside of Europe may not know that these were released in, in certainly in the UK and I'm presuming probably other countries as well, but I am pretty sure these versions aren't available in the US. And the reason why I mention it is both, uh, all, all the seasons, one, two and three, have been released with the original soundtracks now on them. So as you may know from the American versions, uh, they didn't have the right to the original music, but these ones do. So you've got all the original probably 60s songs, 60s, 70s songs actually on these ones. And in addition to the, the American uh, box sets, they actually have a quite a good documentary attached to them as well. Well, I had the American box sets before I had these ones, so I've now bought the, the British ones instead. So along with the original music, you've also got quite a, uh, and this is a modern um, documentary that's kind of been made, uh, which is very, very good actually, I have to say. So if, if you're watching from outside the UK and another country that doesn't have these ones, I recommend you maybe pick them up because you're, you're in for a bit of a treat. So uh, before I get into, again get into the season uh, review as such, I want to talk about a little bit about uh, the actual season as a whole, the series as a whole. So um, after the first season, you know it was it did fairly well in ratings, but they they were missing out on uh, a lot of the female audience, and this is why they introduced a bit more of the the sort of more soap opera side of things in season two, and also a lot of with um, the sort of female characters that you had in season two. But it didn't really improve the ratings. So they changed the tack again. And there were, there's less female characters. There's, there is a few. Uh, but they introduced a couple of, sort of uh, more famous guest stars in this in, in, again. And with hopes that it would improve the ratings. Um, unfortunately, it didn't. And from watching the actual documentaries on these DVDs, the season three was a bit, sort of, whether it actually happened, was actually going to be a bit touch and go. And there was actually talk of season uh, season four which according to the documentaries would have focused about more life at home after the war. So as you know, spoilers, uh, at the end of this season, you've got uh, Purcell and Ruiz both, both basically sort of go home. And uh, you've already got, I think Johnson's already home halfway through this sort of season. So it would have focused more on, the, on the, sort of the home life. So it would have been less about the actual war itself. Though you still have some characters obviously um, you know, actually serving combat duty whilst they were over there. And I would assume you'd probably have new characters introduced. Alas, we never got season four, so this is what we're left with. So this season is a little bit different. I, was, I actually think it, it kind of, um, it goes back to a little bit more of an action approach to more, more to akin to season one, whilst season two was a bit more soapy. Um, the main sort of difference with this season, they're actually, it's it's more of a sort of an ongoing arc this season than the previous two seasons. Now, as far as I was aware, the US government actually pulled its support of this series in season three. So in, in the first two seasons, they allowed the, the production to use a lot of the sort of the military equipment and stuff like that, whilst in season three, as far as I know, they didn't. So this also accounts partially for the, the, the sort of changing, changing sort of sets really. So now the, um, the, the, all the squad basically moved to Camp Barnett, which is a SOG team, which is kind of like a bit like a special forces team. And they're led by um, Colonel Brewster, played by Carl Weathers, who's kind of like a reoccurring guest star in this season. Uh, in the first, I think the first couple of episodes, we have a brief cameo from Baker, who was, we haven't seen from the first season, although it was a pretty pointless uh, cameo to be honest with you and throughout this season we we're introduced to a few new characters as well uh, the, the only real regular one was uh, a, a character called Doc Hock played by John Dye who unfortunately died in real life in 2011 from a heart attack um, and he's kind of filling the role like Horn did in the, in the first series where he's kind of like a bit of a pacifist and, and kind of won't fight I gotta say I still I think I preferred Horn as a character to, to Doc Cock to be honest with you but you know we've also got a few t t towards the end of the season the sort of second half of the season you've also got the kind of the other, I guess the other sort of the major sort of star in this and that's Lee Majors and he plays uh, a character called Pop Scarlet who is like a uh, an older sort of soldier who's basically has, has sort of gone up through the ranks but been demoted through his sort of behaviour and he's now just a private sort of serving uh, you know just at a sort of the, the same level with sort of like Johnson and, and Taylor and everyone like that basically. You've also got uh, 
a character called Griner, played by Carl Chandler, who is probably the one who has gone on to do sort of a lot more sort of more popular. He's maybe his, his profile sort of raised a bit, but obviously this isn't a sort of an early role for him. Uh, there's, there's also a few kind of characters that have gone over to sort of a, a few episodes where you sort of see him in a few episodes. There's a lot of like newbies that end up get, of getting chewed up, unfortunately, within the, for their first episode. Now the main sort of, as I say, the main sort of focus on on these these sort of episodes, this kind of special special sort of operations detachment. Now I understand from from what I read that this is considered to be the most unrealistic because the infantrymen that we've seen in the previous two seasons simply wouldn't have done these type of missions. Suffice to say, it does make it a bit more variety, however, because the episodes are all quite different. And as I alluded to earlier, this actually has a bit of more of an ongoing arc. Namely, there's a massacre in a uh, in a village where basically another sort of squad of soldiers simply wipe out all these sort of uh, civilians and and basically massacre this entire village. And there's really an ongoing sort of story with what actually happens in regards to that, because Lieutenant Goldman actually is kind of friends with the lieutenant of, of that sort of squad as well. Uh, but it's a really decent, um, it's, a, it's a decent series, of, you know, better than season two. I still don't think it's quite as good as season one, if I'm honest. Um, I quite like the new characters. I, 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 Carl, Carl Brewster, played by Carl Weathers, I think is a great character. And we get a better backstory. I have to say, Lieutenant McKay, I was never particularly sold on, on his character. He's kind of given something to do when they have one of the, sort of the few female characters that are in this. There's kind of like a nun who's kind of in charge of this orphanage that sort of McKay has this friendship with. But that to me only, only sort of seemed like um, really just to give him something to do because to be quite honest with you, he, he, you know, he's, he's not a lot, there's not a lot for him to do in the actual story. Uh, I'll talk briefly about the last couple of episodes. The last two episodes um, for, for this series, uh, the, the second to last one is probably the most thrilling episode of, of the season when this is where they actually fly into North Vietnam to try and rescue some POWs from a Vietnam prison camp. And it's, you know, it's a, it's a really, it's a good, great build up and some, you know, some good action set pieces as well. And, you know, it's quite thrilling. Uh, the last episode is a little bit different because it's, you've got half the cast that have gone home at this point. Now, uh, we sort of see this sort of the, the civilian lives of, of Ruiz and Bissell and how they're kind of dealing with with being at home, the sort of the trials that they're, that they're having. And there's no real sort of through narrative in this one. It's kind of just a little bit of snippets about here and there, about what kind of what everyone's doing. And we see that the kind of, it, the, the like Taylor and, and, the, and Sarge and everyone who's still in Vietnam and how they're sort of dealing with these sort of new recruits that are sort of coming through. And, and the sort of the, the, we get the idea, obviously, the sort of the, the war is changing at this point and people are becoming sort of jaded with it ultimately. Uh, I have to say, the, the last episode does end on a bit of a downer. It would have been nice to maybe have that fourth season, but I think it ends at an appropriate place. The episodes that have a more action orientated, and there's a great episode where they go into a village and there's a tank in there. And there's, there's some really, you know, fantastic episodes in this. There are some weaker ones as well. Uh, whilst, but overall, it's a really enjoyable series. Uh, and this season, I would, I would class it as my second favourite, with the first one still being at the top season, in my, in my own opinion. But I'm going to give this one a 7.5 out of 10. Uh, let me know what you thought of this season. What was your best season? Leave me a comment and I look forward to seeing you next time. Bye for now.